Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 143. Hello out there, I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me in SideQuest Studios tonight is Tom Burt. Hello. Eddie Price. Hello. And here as always, except when he's not, BT Calloway. No, hi, hi. And welcome to The Simpsons Index. This is a podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode must come from a different decade. Now, who's our sponsor tonight? Well, our sponsor tonight, Elliot, is Rocks. Yes, whether you want to slay a giant or kill two birds with one stone, try Rocks. (laughs) Available pretty much everywhere. Just look at your feet. There's probably some there now. I mean, only if you listen to podcasts outside like some kind of weirdo. (laughs) Dark, cold rooms only. Now, yeah, we review episodes from the HD era, the teens era, and the classic era, but today we are foregoing the HD era to have a look at the new era, because just last week, The Simpsons started their 31st season. This is the world we live in now. Mm. (laughs) And yeah, so we haven't quite landed on a name for this era yet. We're sort of floating between the 30s... Uh, the... Disney own all era. <laughs> and also the depression, as yeah. pitched by Nick from Pods in the Key of Springfield. Like and subscribe. Can I uh, add in there Fresh Hell era? Yep. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Fresh Hell era, sponsored by Trident Fresh Hell. <laughs> when you smell <laughs> hell, you try Trident. <laughs> so yeah, we just watched season 31, episode one, The Winter of Our Monetized Content. First released in September of 2019, it was directed by Bob Anderson, written by Ryan Coe. In this episode homer and bart go viral with a fight video and some dude called warburton parker comes along to help them monetize and capitalize on their success and in the b story lisa gets into detention and then uh, unionizes the other detentionees because they're being forced to Uh, work you can skip the b story because they pretty much did (laughs) i'm still trying to piece it together and then the teachers end up working what the fuck ever hey guys what do we think (laughs) Mm. Uh. sentiments shared by all so much promise so much i was like the beginning of this might this might be a bronze 31 and it might be a bronze holy crap and that didn't last Mm. you know you had your sponsor that was rocks yep (laughs) it's equally as bland yep (laughs) yeah this was a bag of rocks but yeah i gotta agree it started out okay there were a lot of jokes i liked you want to know the difference between this and rocks you can polish rocks (laughs) (laughs) ouch all right we'll start with you tom for better or worse what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you Oh, sudden, like, real, real nostalgia going back to the Goosebumps books Mm -hmm. um, in the private prison detention center kind of thing, B story, which I actually quite enjoyed. The B story as a whole kind of enjoyed it until it got dropped entirely. Well, they never knew what they were doing the entire time. Like, it literally starts off, sorry to hijack your point here but it's it makes me angry and i want to talk about it <laughs> i was offended by the the goosebumps thing i'm like why are you taking goosebumps for yeah you know, leave goosebumps alone and the old ones were spooky yeah that's right like they were probably the only books i've ever read like <laughs> like i remember you used to get like the scholastic thing and you used to fill it out in primary school and you order yeah. the books my yep. mum used to run those no sure yeah she, nice. she ran the the scholastic book fair so i've got loads of goosebumps still lying around brilliant oh. She probably, yeah, filled out a bunch of my orders. Oh. I know. I nearly bought, like, the small collection they've got out, which has, like, 60 bucks. You get, like, 12 of them. Like, I'm never going to read it. I just want to <laughs> reread the first one to see if it's as good as I remember it. It won't be. Yeah. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, there's still books for children. And, yeah. Yeah. I still find it funny, yeah, Simpsons going after Goosebumps for not actually being scary when they're a comedy show. That's not actually that funny. <laughs> take that, Burn Simpsons. How about you, Eddie? What stands out to you from this episode for better or worse? Uh, they had a weird level of attention to detail that I didn't see in some of the newer stuff I've seen in the past. In Moe's Bar, there was mm-hmm. a bottle at the back, which was absolute crusty, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I quite liked. And then, you know, but then... When the hipster dude asked for, or Marge went to get him a microbrew, yeah. Yeah. it came out with some generic thing that was like IPA bitter. Yeah. It looked like Willy was on there, and I was waiting for it to be like <laughs> Willy's bitter, but it wasn't. So I just, interesting attention to detail. and Yeah. Not. Oh, there is a groundskeeper Willy pun in there somewhere, but exactly. I don't know enough about microbrews. <laughs> You'd think so by the length of my beard, but I'm not actually that hipster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Willy Hopter. Oh, yeah. That's the best I got. <laughs> Instead of Willy Copter. What's a Willy Copter? Look it up. Yeah. Oh. And Don't. then run screaming. <laughs> Isn't Dong Copter the, the go-to? 
I don't know, man. <laughs> Donkopter just sounds better. It does. It endlessly so much more. Sounds like a band. Yeah. <laughs> we are Donkopter. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Welcome to Bristol. <laughs> yeah, but I, I actually really liked that line of Homer. Ah, oh, a hipster. Quick merch. Get him microbrew. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed that. And then he rolled with it. Made sense. Yeah. While we're here, yeah, the hipster Warburton Parker, played by John Mulaney. Oh. oh. I don't know the name. Who's that again? He's a comedian. He frequently does work with Nick Kroll. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's a very respected stand-up in his own right who, like, i got to say, I, I'm a big fan of stand-up. I never used to like him until his latest special, which I think couldn't be a more perfect put-together piece of art. Nice. Well, also, he is Spider-Ham. That's right. <laughs> My hands aren't wet. I something something. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's just doing it to be on The Simpsons? That's the thing. I think even now (laughs) you get the opportunity to guest. I think people still take it because, you know, it's still iconic. Yeah. He's got a great voice. He does. Mm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, Spider-Ham, what a joy of the Spider-Verse movie. (laughs) Um, And yeah, he's also, um, you've seen Big Mouth, right? Uh, Yeah. The not Nick Kroll kid, the the awkward one that uh, has the puberty monster following him around. And yeah. So I thought he did a decent job in this episode. He did his best with what he had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we say about a lot of guest stars these days. BT, how about you? What stands out to you for better or worse? Uh, Skinner attempts to use the Heimlich maneuver on Chalmers. Don't use the Heimlich because most people don't know how to do it well. Just three firm, strong pats on the back. If that doesn't work, switch to the front and continue to alternate until the uh, obstruction is dislodged. Someone has done their St. John's ambulance course. Indeed I have. <laughs> <laughs> and Skinner would know that. So, uh, you know. I actually really enjoyed this sequence of the food fight with the tater tots that yep. were hard as rocks. <laughs> so good. Oh, did anyone notice the um, Saving Private Ryan reference? Yeah. Oh, Where really? the guy, he takes a bullet to the helmet and then takes it off and then gets hit again. Yeah. Oh. A direct reference. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. Oh, that's really good. But yeah, this like reminded me of good old war movies as well. And they mm. had like, yeah, the strings going as well. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, really well directed bit of animation here. Yeah, it all made sense and fit together and led to a B-plot that was garbage. Mm. <laughs> but even I liked the nerds were like, all right, it's do or die. And like, yeah. they like, uh, perceived the mathematical equation for the most optimal potato tot throwing. Use your quadratic formulas, kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, that was really good. <laughs> yeah. But then the uh, the exchange kid from um, Turkey, mm. yeah. whose name was Physics? What? That from, was lazy. Yeah. I don't get Tur- it. <laughs> Turkmenistan? Yeah. Was it? I guess it's physics is a really popular name in Turkmenistan. Is it? I don't no. know. I was merely amused by the background gag of Willie putting all the tater tots back in the machine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the tater tots machine as well. Just yeah. and, and then drop in a little squirt of sauce that goes everywhere. This is where we're headed. I would yeah. pay good money for a tater tots machine that get, <laughs> like gave me good active. Active? Yeah. Hot. I mean, I've I've gotten like fries from a machine before and they it was fine. It wasn't amazing, but hey. Mm. I remember in Amsterdam, they've got, they kind of look like vending machines, but there is a restaurant behind them, but they are totally, yeah, put a coin in or tap the card or whatever, and a door will open up and you can just get a cheeseburger or Mm. a little vegetable pasty or whatever. Yeah, same thing in Disneyland with, like, cupcake machines. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Uh, Dystopia. (laughs) That's going to be a wonderful... (laughs) Dystopia? I think that's amazing. (laughs) Give me more vending machine... You can tell the episode wasn't great because we've been talking about vending machines for the past five minutes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, leading to what stood out to me from this episode, I'm going to say, yeah, the initial scenes with Bart and Homer fighting, again, really well-directed bits of animation and slapstick comedy. And fuck me, the when Bart is, like, spraying Homer with the yellow paint and then Homer drew his own face back on. It is fucking ridiculous, but goddamn, I actually loved it. Yeah, yeah. It It was funny. surprisingly well. But I feel like they love to ruin things. Yeah. And, like, in that moment when Homer goes, why you hilarious? It's like, uh, it it was funny. You didn't have to say it. Yeah. I mean, I think the same thing is actually, we don't often talk about the couch gags, but I think that was a great example as well. Yes. Because there's this bit where they're folding a piece of paper and it turns into the Simpsons on the couch. And I thought that was funny, but it's ruined by having Homer's voice going, okay, and I fold this and it becomes a swan. What the? (laughs) It's like, no, it was a good visual. Why did you ruin it? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Did Dan Castell and Edda set a word counter in this episode that he had to meet? Like, (laughs) yeah. But yeah, it's a shame. And especially towards the end where, I don't know, I don't think they knew how they wanted to end this one either with, yeah, the escalating. Because I kind of like the idea of having them sort of force product placement, but I don't really buy the whole Homer and Bart just wanting to 
love each other instead of fight. I don't know. Yeah, that Why? was weird. Why did they want to love each other? There was no, well, no reason. Fair enough that, you know, okay, they do actually love each other and don't always fight, but they've never been that show of aff- affection before. They never just hugged for the sake of it. You yeah. Know? So all of a sudden it's like, oh, Dad, I see you. You too. I guess we should hug. It's like, but... <laughs> You don't do this. At, but, like, it, you the never acting have. sounded uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was, <laughs> these aren't words that come out of my character's mouth. Yeah, and, and it's, like, it's just frustrating because one line, all you needed is, but I know we've been fighting a lot, but you know this is just play acting. Oh, yeah, of course I did. Okay, good for you, son. Hug. That's it. Yeah, Instead that's of this, it. Hi, Dad. I haven't seen you for a while. Would you like an embrace? <laughs> you know, it was uh, worse than all those moments. Yeah. yeah. The floss dance. That stank up the room, did it not? I think all of us died a little. And we're like, no, episode Y. I was enjoying you up till now. And they kept going for so goddamn long. And the little thing comes on the bottom and says, our backpack kid, don't sue us. It's like, for fuck's sake, he legally can't. (laughs) It's very simple. You can trademark a routine. You cannot trademark a single move. Because, mm. ah. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned the title of the episode before we started watching it. Who called there would be a Fortnite? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No. oh, right. Wait, uh, sorry. I must correct. Because that was a legal thing, wasn't it? Because Fortnite put it in there. Put it in there, Backpack Kid tried to sue. Yeah. But that's how I know that you can patent a routine, but not a single move. But wasn't the whole thing that he actually, he agreed to it up front? I don't know. Going I mean, in the game? I assume that got deeper and deeper and they uncovered more and more dirt on yeah. each other. And uh, then there was just mutually assured destruction. Yeah, because uh, it was also the thing, because Turk from Scrubs had a dance that was, yeah, that was put in, in there. there. And uh, what's his face from Fresh Prince? Yep. That had the Carlton. Yeah, that's right. And Turk was technically the only one who would have had a case. Yeah. Because it's definitely an entire routine. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Play count. Yep. Have you guys seen this episode since last Sunday when it aired? <laughs> Surprisingly, 700 times. <laughs> oh. Damn. Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, not even I bothered to watch it. I just thought it would be fun, yeah, to bring this one today. <laughs> anyway, uh, so was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Yes. Mm. Very, very much so. Mm. Like, constant, constant stuff that wasn't present in actual... <laughs> Simpsons yeah. life mm. T- loads of like fun little drawings over the thing except they kept using the the bottom text yeah, yeah. which is really why very rarely do those jokes work my main whackness is going to be when um internet guy first shows up and Homer's eyes keep changing to like dollar signs and then fire mm. and then exclamation points You're like apro of literally nothing it's like oh why okay. <laughs> is this a new thing in animation that I've missed? Like, just no. emojis going through eyes? It's just, just to put a... emojis in the episode. It's yeah. like, <laughs> no point. Yeah, Buzz Cola fights and throwing steaming baskets of uh, hot oil on Homer. And... Uh, a bit of whack I did like is where they were like, we're going to be rich. And then Mr. Burgess goes, goes, I'm, and I'm going to be even richer. How, why are you here? I have an app that alerts me whenever someone's getting rich. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> I liked it. I'm glad that played for you guys because it just left me confused. <laughs> oh, like, I loved it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I like Mr. Um, Burnsy. I liked Moe's going back to his people. I find, I find Moe's is like consistently to be one of the driest but funniest characters in the show. Mm. Just his delivery of like, I'm going back to my people. And then I, I would in the sewer. agree if they hadn't done it so many times. Because at oh, this point no. we've seen his background as being, he's part Yeti, he's part of like literally a thousand different origins. If they just, because like it was short and simply just don't, goes back into the sewer and like, oh hey guys. Hey, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> I think that's what I liked about it, the brevity and like the quick absurdness of it as well. And especially because yeah, it came after this, anything you want Homer and then <laughs> change the name of the bar to Homer. Homer's like, oh, that was a bit much. <laughs> Ten bucks says it's not going to be Homer's next episode. <laughs> Has that happened before? I feel like that's happened before. Uh, that Homer has changed the name of Moe's to Homer's? Yeah. Uh, I had, I had it's deja changed vu. a few times, but I don't think it's ever been at Homer's... No, Homer has been in charge of the bar before, but yeah, all the that's, way back in yeah. season 13. But uh, no, he still kept the name. It's right. a solid brand in Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the other wacky thing, I guess, is the whole detention subplot, just because... Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm locked and loaded on this one. This one pissed me off so much. Shoot your guns, man. Go oh, I'm it. going for it. Okay, so first off, <laughs> when Lisa gets a detention, but it technically wasn't her fault because she was just trying to skewer a tater tot with her fork and like, who threw the first one? She's like, it wasn't me. They do this kind of fade to making a misbehavior. So you think, okay, they're going to do a making a murder parody. They immediately abandon that to do a breakfast club parody. Yep. They immediately abandon that to have this whole thing about, no, now you're printing license plates for kids' cars and things. And then that becomes a strike thing, which gets immediately resolved by, instead of forcing kids to do it for free, we're going to pay adults to do it. It's like, but 
that none of these things are connected in the slightest, other than they have the same people in them. <laughs> Can anyone no. remind me at the end when the teacher started doing it? Was there a resolution to the students after that? No, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> this was about detention, and they're like, "Oh, you know what? Why don't we just pay adults to?" It? It's like because you were getting free labor from the. Ch- do you remember your own plot line? And they were going for the whole. Oh, private prisons, private prisons, private prisons yeah. thing. Yeah. Which, yeah, great, great. Have some social commentary yeah, on that. Sure. But actually propose a resolution. Yeah. That or they... have a punchline instead of, we'll just pay people. It's like, but that's not what you were doing and not what the social issue is. Yeah. <sighs> no, it's ridiculous. And especially because, yeah, that whole doing the making a murderer parody intro sequence thing, it's just like, okay, why did you animate that if you weren't going to do a parody of that. And, like, what parody could you do of that anyway? <laughs> that is just... Immediately I was like, oh, no, this is going to be gross. Is it the Netflix connection? Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, yeah, the Making a Murderer, the Steve Avery documentary. Uh, oh, no, no, but, like... And they mentioned Netflix a bunch later oh, in the episode. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the only connection I can think of. Oh, that was my other... Yeah, my other comment from the start was that they actually used brands in this mm. which yeah. i thought was surprising so that there was netflix trident axe they're all real brands right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually kind of a relief because yeah the simpsons usually do this yeah parallel import mm. uh making up their own parody names for these things i think it was actually kind of a relief that they actually use the recognized things but yeah i keep trying to like filter these stories through uh the dan Harmon story circle thing or and it's just it was like a flat line that just kept splintering off into its own thing. Like, yeah, it didn't make sense. Yeah, I just remembered the um the social commentary thing because you you mentioned it before, mm. but there were two like really awkward moments of social commentary mm. with the first one about the climate. Mm. Everyone yeah. just like disregarding the climate. I'm like, don't do it. We we don't, we don't need it. And then uh, what was the other one? Um, I think it was going to be the uh, makeup product. Yes. Oh. oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, I kind of liked that one. I, no, no, I liked it because, again, it's not the show making that joke. It's making the fun of the people who do yeah. make that. So it's not then, yeah. It's a weird disconnect, but uh, like it, 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 good... it just felt, it was like edge out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, it was so awkward. Like, I was, there was a definite, like, resounding, whoa, in the room. <laughs> like, uh... For the uh, for the listeners at home, the gag was that a makeup tutorial artist was putting on a tone and one of them was called black and the other was called skin color. Yeah. No yeah. good. But they introduced her as makeup tutorial artist with uh, vague racial undertones. Yeah. White power makeup artist or whatever. Vague just, white supremacy don't that undertones. Was it, that was it. Yeah. No, fucking weird. But I did kind of like the unboxing guy in that scene as well. Oh, yeah. He's like unboxing the styrofoam container of the Krusty Burger and he's like critiquing the box. Like, yeah. It was actually a drawn out gag that I was like, oh, okay, yeah. this is a bit of, of a Of all the drawn out ones, I thought that was pretty good. Guys, quickly throw it back to Wacky because I just saw in my notes the Pope died. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and just the chalk outline. <laughs> no, like... that was classic news, uh, Simpsons news gag joke as well. Like, going on way too long about the student strike. And, oh, yeah, by the way, Pope died. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the other bit before with the climate thing. What was that from? Oh, because that was from the montage of people... Laughing at Barton Homer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually kind of liked this montage. Even the bit of the woman giving birth was... <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually yeah. tickled me a little. Yeah, especially when the baby's crying and they show her the video and it starts laughing. It's because like, yeah. yeah. it was in Cute. the first half of the episode. It was before it completely collapsed. Ah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. And I think we can skip over this pretty quickly. How about the heart of the episode? Did you guys feel bumps? It, <laughs> it <laughs> thinks it does. It's like, okay, so now Bart and Homer are going to fight to the death. Ah, uh, psych, they didn't. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. I am so stunned. And I feel like they could have even sold this with Homer and Bart sort of realizing that they enjoyed spending time together and being creative and coming up with these videos. Yeah, and... have the like again. All you need is a line of it was never about the fame; it was about spending time with your dad. And it's like, yeah. oh. mm. they should have just fought to death. Season thirty-one, episode one, last episode of The Simpsons. No, the rest is like the morning episodes. Yeah. Wow, heavy. Like a fucking. Eight simple rules or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you mean ten reasons, however many reasons why? No, I mean like eight simple rules for dating my teenage daughter where John Ritter died and they kept going anyway. And they and renamed they, it they, as eight simple rules. And they just wrote his death into the show and, you know, a lot of it was about the grieving and they're like, and they even advertised it like the tears are real. And it's like, 
Ooh, I feel dirty. I'm really glad you weren't talking about 13 Reasons Why. Then. No, I was not. Oh, no. <laughs> that's a very different dead show. Yes. <laughs> but they also did that on Scrubs because, yeah, John Ritter played JD's dad and he oh, died yeah. and then they wrote his death into the show. Yeah, yeah. When a oh. family member brings cake, you know there's bad news. You know, it was in Scrubs, mm. Brendan Fraser's character dying? Mm. Yeah. Oh, one of the saddest TV episodes I've ever and watched. It sucker punches you as well. It does. Yeah. Fuck that episode. Yeah. Oh. Still mm. remains one of my favorite episodes of television. Oh my goodness! Yeah, no, the heart crying. question. We've moved on so quickly. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't even any heart to be had from the Lisa storyline of striking and rallying the kids either, because it went bailed on its own point. So, ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? First act, sure. Yeah, characters behaving like themselves. Yeah, I'd pay that. Yeah. I mean, except for what happened to Homer and Bart towards the end. But for the most part, I mean, them fighting is a, is a staple. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, first act totally. But then we were just talking about how this awkward, oh, dad, let's hug. It's like, yeah. you don't talk like that ever. Yeah. yeah. Why are you holding my hand, dad? Oh, I think I saw it in a book. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, son. Mm. You do, mm. in fact, read a lot, father. <laughs> yeah, they slowly turned into that fucking couch gag written by Don Hertzfeld. <laughs> I am Simpson. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen that? Sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, too. I feel like the integrity question is cut and dry. Characters are mostly behaving like themselves, but the show as a whole, this mm. isn't reminding us of classic Simpsons, really. And it's a shame because, like, I don't really have anything against when Simpsons do, like, modern storylines, because I feel like they still have something to say in the current era of social media-based entertainment. And I think there were, like, even a few, like, what felt like classic-era Simpsons jokes about influence and, and, and stuff in that. I just don't feel like the episode knew what it wanted to say about them. Yeah. But anyway, yes or no, would you watch this one again? Yeah. Uh, I, think there's, I think there's things I probably missed in that, because there was a lot of attention to detail. I'll watch it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For the uh, audience at home, there is a very strange look as he's trying to decide. Oh, if- there, there is the face I think best described with. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> gurning right now. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe mm? just uh, for the John Mulaney of it. Yeah. yeah. I only need to like point out where it went wrong and rewrite it and rework it and uh, visually remove the floss dance. <laughs> Just scrub out every goddamn frame yep. of that. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, we'll start with you, BT. What would you like to change about this episode? Uh, okay. Get rid of Lisa's entire plot line or change it dramatically. It's pointless. It does nothing. It goes nowhere. So either change everything after that first tater tot scene, which was legitimately good, mm. and or remove it entirely. I don't know, one or the other, or make it make it a separate episode. Maybe parody um, American Vandal instead. You know that yeah. would be fine. Mm. And then just have a point to that their escalation, Barton Homer's escalation, gets ruined by them not behaving like themselves and having this really tender moment for no reason that is completely forced and artificial. So get some other kind of conflict in there because. That doesn't happen. And yeah. then we'll have a different episode and I won't hate it. <laughs> How about you, Eddie? What would you like to change? I kind of got a vibe at the start that the Homer's internet show was going to be an Alex Jones thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't go there. And I wonder if they were just... Uh, they really could have done it. I feel like mm. Homer would do a great Alex Jones. And I would have liked to see maybe half an episode of Homer doing an Alex Jones type podcast sure. thing yeah, yeah that's interesting i like that because yeah he is the kind of sort of blowhard that would be good at that yeah <laughs> and how about you tom what would you like to change yeah i'm very much with bt on this but i think honestly in the writing room it feels like they started with lisa's story as the a plot and mm-hmm. then flip-flopped it around but if they could find a way to flip-flop it back yeah. so lisa's is the a story go into all of that and then you can have a little bit less stakes with Homer and Bart's story, because the fact that they were meant to be fighting to death in front of an arena of... Yeah, was blah, blah, blah. garbage. Yeah, because I cared less about that than I did about Lisa's story, and then they bungled Lisa's. So just flip-flop them around, do something actually meaty with the private prisons thing, and go that way. Yeah, because I, I feel like the story as well should have been going into more of a direction of them realising that they're just sort of selling out and like maybe even the audience kind of cluing in on that as well is just like, oh, they're only doing this for, you know, corporate sponsorship. You know, this isn't this isn't the original Barton Homer fight in the garage that we knew and loved from the classic era of their YouTube channel. <laughs> but yeah, as for what I'd change, 
yeah, fucking just stick the landing with any of this. Like, I think there's a really interesting thing to do with Lisa going into detention and more slowly realizing that they're packing the detention holes to Mm. have the kids doing these busy work. I don't think you need to go to something as as quickly as extreme as printing license plates, but like, I don't know, like even sewing wallets or something like. Or if they fired all of the cleaners or something Mm. and they're making the kids clean Mm. the school. Yeah. And then she'd be like, small. this isn't about discipline, this is about cleaning the school, and people are getting put in for the smallest infractions, yeah. You can't Ooh. fire Willie. There, there you go, and then Willie gets fired, and he made some redundant. That and he falls great. back on his uh, microbrewery. <laughs> <laughs> it all can come full circle. That was a better episode right there. <laughs> we did it, guys. Nice. All right, well, we are here. BT, do you have any other notes? I got a bunch. A man who doesn't know about sports, you're not really a man anymore. I just think if you have a husband and a father now. Mm. I thought that was joke was pretty good as someone who doesn't know Jack about sports. Oh, <laughs> and just while we're here, what do we think of the whole Anger Watkins uh, character? I would waited till he stopped talking so the episode could start. <laughs> <laughs> there, I actually I wrote in here, why are there so many sports references? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, we're still men. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is anyone here a sports fan, really? No. No. <laughs> I thought Homer was, though. Yeah. That was my main. Well, I guess weirdness. the idea is he gets flustered and he doesn't know what to say. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, but, like, in general. Like, because mm. he he then talks about on his own sports yeah. show about. Well, he also wasn't yeah. sure why Muhammad Ali never fought Cassius Clay. Yeah, so. I know oh. that. <laughs> Stop trying to make the Simpsons make sense. <laughs> I uh. want it to. <laughs> I know you do. Man. I fucking hated that joke. So, ah, uh, boo. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but whatever. Oh, um, sorry. I like Skinner's flashback in the middle of the tater tots. He flashback to Nam in the middle of a food fight. Yes. <laughs> For just, just the right amount of time as well. Yeah, mm. it was just enough to get the laugh, and then we left it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That fucking first act, I'm still bewildered. It's attached to the rest of this nonsense. <laughs> Although, just to balance that great bit out, there's a part where Homer starts laughing, and we all take notes because he spends the next minute and a half laughing. We're like... Yeah, you see all those characters who are standing around bored waiting for Homer to stop laughing? We know what that feels like. This is bad writing. And yeah, all over that monkey sniff finger fall oh. down joke, which oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, me too. I will say is one of the greatest YouTube videos of all oh, time. For sure. But they took four bites of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four bites. They ruined it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even mind the reprise of it at the end where the monkey like sniffs Homer's belly yeah, that button. Was fine. But then they did it again for absolutely no reason. <laughs> yep. Too many bites leaves nothing left. But transversely, I do kind of like the pick the hand moment where he's just like, okay, this isn't a bit, just pick a hand. No, nope, not the same hand, different hand. Okay, but it's just, it's in this one. Okay, stop it. It was a little bit, hello, Mr. Thompson in that one. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I think I was sold again with John Mulaney and mm, Homer's deliveries. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. My last is a bit of a John Zane O'Connor. John Zane O'Connor. The guy from the internet holds his phone in portrait. I mean, <laughs> is this his first day on the internet? John. <laughs> I didn't notice that. That's great. <laughs> Uh, how about you, Eddie? Any other notes? You know how uh, Simpsons parodies life? It's a mm-hmm. whole thing. There was like uh, mm-hmm. one the other day about Greta Thunberg and, and Trump that actually happened as well. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's kind of a weird circle here where I just remembered that they've done a similar thing before where Bart drew Angry Dad in a, in a comic. Mm-hmm. I just remembered that. Yeah. But then in Australia, there's a social media personality of Angry Dad. It's like a two sons who mess with their dad. <laughs> oh. So it's like that came out of Angry Dad on The Simpsons. But then this whole episode felt like they were parroting that, that <laughs> internet show, which was kind of weird. So uh, weird life circle. imitates art. Art imitates life right back. Exactly. Oh. And then <laughs> my other one was that comic book guy has a girlfriend? Has a, a wife. wife. Oh, yeah. oh, man, I've missed we, so much of this. Canonical. <laughs> we actually haven't reviewed this episode yet on The Simpsons, but yeah, I think it's around season 25 that he meets Kamiko and they get married. And yeah, that's just a thing that exists in The Simpsons universe. It's a fun episode. Yeah. I haven't actually seen it for the longest time. And of course they cosplay. Of course. Yeah, I didn't mind the joke about that, but I think, again, just them returning to it wasn't really needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, the moon thing of comic book guy just slowly falling over. It it was another five seconds that could have gone to the opening credits. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I think that's it. That's what I liked. I liked him saying, yeah, she's going to be Sailor Moon and I'm going to be the moon. Mm. Great joke, but then to go... Here's what it looked like. A bit much. Yeah. <laughs> Tell then show, Elliot. <laughs> How about you, Tom? Any other notes? 
My whole career depends on me never quite getting to the point. <laughs> ah, haha, never quite finishing. Um, also, I'm totally with Maggie at the end there. I am a sucker, huge sucker for car crash and motorcycle <laughs> crash and anything crash road rage videos on YouTube. I am... <laughs> the worst person for that. <laughs> God, I love them. Like, oh, best road rage, American, no, 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 or crazy Russian accidents. Um, Russian well, dash cam footage is some of the most amazing stuff. Have I you seen it. the tank one? Maybe, I can't there's, remember. There's one there's, driving down the road and the tank tanks. just drives in front of <laughs> <Fuck, laughs> <through> the field. <laughs> it's one of those things where it seems like it happens a lot in Russia, but no, it's like mandatory for them to have dash cams now. Yeah, yeah. And in much the same way, you know, you see all those internet articles about Florida man does this crazy fucking thing. But it's because Florida actually have very lax laws with accessing police records for journalistic purposes. So all right. it's, I mean, I'm sure Florida is part of the reason that there's so many Florida <laughs> men out there. But mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, now it's time for my final notes. Now it's time and now it's time for his final notes. Elliot's final notes. I loved the cheer up and congratulation kebabs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though Marge in that moment, oh, poor oh. Julie Kavanaugh. Oh, uh, yeah. I could, I could hear, hear that. I grabbed I heard my Tom throat. Just like, <laughs> yeah, sympathy rubbing his throat. Like, yeah, mm. poor, poor woman. Homer made a monorail reference, which was just totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. Monetized. One, monorail. monorail. One side of my mouth smiled. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just just like, oh, yeah, monorail. It is an apt <laughs> I observation. That. I did that too. <laughs> Yeah, that was another thing with the story. I thought that they were going to go with a bit more of, you know, the Homer and Bart getting preferential treatment everywhere. That yep. Again, there was just a couple of scenes of that, and that got dropped. Like, yeah, when the bullies escorted Bart. I thought that was, yeah, really cute. But then, weird bit about Wiggum going, let's give the big one a gun and call it a weekend. What? Mm. <laughs> we need to give something the internet really loves. Betty White. <laughs> Very good joke. True. Uh, didn't like the whole Homer rambling on about the pill thing. Ah, oh, that was awkward. Uh, yeah, weird. Is yeah. it in pill form or does it go the other end? It's like, uh, yeah. uh, butt joke. Either yeah. way, it's still, it's still a pill. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's still a pill. It's just a suppository. Yeah. And, oh yeah, you mentioned the train crash thing, so that would put me out of notes. So it must be time to rank this thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just, <laughs> you give a participant, but for the positive rankings, you got OK Bronze, Good Silver, Excellent Gold, but for the best of the very best, you give Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to go first, let me show you how it's done. It actually really pains me to do this because I wanted to like this episode a lot more mm-hmm. than I did because, yeah, pretty strong first act, but man, it just limped towards the end. And so I'm going to give it a big limping participant, but I want everyone else out there in the world to know that it was goddamn close to being a bronze, but... Mm-hmm. Can't do it, man. Can't do it. BT. Same page, man. I would have loved if it had kept that, you know, opening up, or if it had just been coherent, I could have given this a bronze. But no, nope, they completely flubbed everything, and that's a participant. Eddie. This episode feels like if you went to Bunnings and got a uh, sausage snag, mm-hmm. and then it rained. And it, it, it's <laughs> oh. a bit of a wet sausage. And then your bread got all wet, and you're like, it's unsalvageable. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you rain on my bunning sausage snag. <laughs> that's, the, that's the original song. <laughs> Participant. And Tom, finish it off. Yeah, my emotions just completely sw- like switched off about halfway through. Mm. It's a participant. Uh, just sad. Yeah, I think yeah, it sucks. We're I think we're all very disappointed in this episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're not mad. <laughs> just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. All right, that'll make this a unanimous participant. And from the 30s as well, we have Krusty the Clown when Krusty runs away and joins the circus. Oh, yeah. That was a participant. Mm -hmm. And also the clown stays in the picture, which was the episode where Krusty's recording a podcast with Mark Maron. Uh, I yeah. listened to the podcast after I listened to this podcast, and then I listened, (laughs) watched the episode. (laughs) I didn't enjoy it, no. <laughs> but it was all it right. It exists. No, the podcast was all right. A bit of awkward improv in it, but the Yardley Smith interview is fucking great mm-hmm. out of that. All right, and before we move on to our Teens Era episode, we must ask, is that reputation justified? Is that reputation justified? Just Ding. <laughs> Dennis Perkins of the AV Club. Dennis the Wildcard Perkins. He gave this episode a B-. minus. He's been giving everything B and B- minuses <laughs> lately. Dennis B. Perkins. I've, 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 you know, I've asked to change his nickname because he's not a wild card anymore. Dennis <laughs> Perkins. It's just Dennis. The I don't know. Give it a B. Perkins. <laughs> Do you think he cares anymore? Probably I, not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, B minus is. It's not 
much above a participant. I'd say if we were translating for our scale, it'd be bronze, dull, bronze territory. And he says, as I've opined before, how do you pronounce that word? O-P-I-N-E-D. Opined? Opined. 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 with opined. Yeah. It's like the adjective form of opinion. (laughs) Opinion. I like it. Mm. Anyway, as I've opened before there is a good show even a resurgent great show lurking in the wealth of talent and history and viewer loyalty in the simpsons there are hints of that show peeping around the edges even of this first episodes of the show's 31st season coming as it does some two decades after literally everybody could agree that the simpsons was one of the best tv comedies ever made there are ways to raise the show to that consensus classic again so here's to another season of hope and intermittent enjoyment intermittent (laughs) yeah he's pretty optimistic <laughs> i mean i don't think he watched it so <laughs> <laughs> like that was he wrote that two weeks before it aired <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything yeah well i'm sort of picking the best sort of sound bitey thing okay because uh, okay. his reviews are more like sort of saying what actually happened in the episode his sort of opinion only ever really comes to the last bit so yeah mm. take it where you can well as he said two decades ago that it was people could agree that it was a classic era of the show we are going back Two decades to season 11 now to Hello Gutter, Hello Fatter. Does anybody know what this episode is based on title alone? Fat people in the gutter. <laughs> I believe I think it's the one where Homer takes Maggie bowling. Mm-hmm. And it's adorable and she saves him from sharks. Yeah. Well done, you. <laughs> yeah. Not like the sharks weren't in the bowling alley. Those were two different he, things. He swallowed a surprising number of shark eggs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is the exact episode we are going to. We'll be back. Azar, I was right. And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Era episode. This was Season 11, Episode 6, Hello Gutter, Hello Fatter. First released in November of 1999, it was directed by Mike B. Anderson, written by Al Jean. In this episode, Homer scores a perfect 300 game and quickly becomes a a local celebrity, but overstays his welcome. And then, after a suicide attempt, uh, decides to refocus his energies on being a good father to Maggie. Guys, what do we think? Delightful. Absolute Mm. winner. Just absolute winner. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Um, 300 out of 300? Oh. <laughs> Did someone say perfect game? <laughs> no. No one said that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I mm. think is, even for season 11 episodes, there's just a lot of jokes in here that are part of the Simpsons lexicon. Yeah, and... I got a lot of good pre-laughter out of this one. Mm. Yeah, look, I am just going to jump the... Um, I usually throw to my guests first for the better or worse question, but I'm just going to quickly go first in the saying the one for worse thing is, yeah, the whole suicide angle of it. He I was think... pushed. Well, he was going to. No, I think he went there just a monologue, and then uh, the guy behind him just shoved him. Let's mm. chat more splat, buddy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like that whole angle of it puts like an awkward downer on the episode for me. Even though I still think it led to some cool material, like him grabbing onto Otto for the bungee jumping and <laughs> going through the different... Ooh, warlocks. Morlocks. Huh? Morlocks. They're Morlocks? Yes. Morlock uh, is not a warlock. Oh. Morlocks are from the time machine. Yeah, the it's subterranean time machine, it? in the future. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I was... Get your subterranean species right, Elliot. Well, Racist. I didn't know that all three of these were movie references. The Chuds from a movie about... Chuds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and apparently, yeah, Chuds is an acronym as well. Yeah. Also, Mole Man is a Mole Man. Yeah. <laughs> and there is no escape from the fortunes of the moles. <laughs> oh, except for that. <laughs> so I will say that is going to be the one thing in this episode that's bringing me down. But how about you, Tom? For better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you? Oh, man. I'm 26 hours late for work. <laughs> that, that entire sequence is just gorgeous. Absolutely. And I fully empathize with Homer. Uh, <laughs> everyone taking money from his wallet. Just. Yeah. Otto and yeah, it's just it's just awesome. Yeah, it's just awesome. Great little montage, beautiful bit of animation, and the yeah snowball too, bringing in the dead bird that he then cuddles for a little bit <laughs> for a few oh, hours, assuming actually. Did it, did it did it like walk away after the bird? Yeah, I thought it just kind of rolled off the bed. No, just yeah, off. I didn't see where it went. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, still, Otto, there's got to be easier ways to um, make out with your girlfriend than <laughs> climbing through Homer's window. <laughs> easier, yes. Sexier, no. Yeah, no. It's just the thrill of nearly getting caught, I think. <laughs> you never had sex on a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> then you haven't lived. 
But yeah, that whole opening montage, and yeah, what a way to set up the episode as well. How about you, Eddie? What stands out to you, for better or worse? Not Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was I saying about popular Simpson lexicon? Quotes? Oh my god, so good. <laughs> I just leaning so hard, and it's just kids. Turn off the TV. I'm afraid I have some difficult news about Lenny. <laughs> Not, Not Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> but that, it's so funny as well because um, this is this Carl. <laughs> Yeah, just, just Carl existing and then being so obsessed with Lenny is yeah. is quality. Yeah, and all the effort she goes to, you know, making the cross stitch, a little Lenny shine. And... <laughs> it's like, and she's not mad at home, she's just so relieved Lenny is okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that story-wise that functions well because, yeah, Marge is, should be more disappointed at home. Like, yeah, just relieved, man. Yeah, but I, I think I also set up the whole Maggie thing in this scene as well, you know, that in that opening montage, you know, she, she breezes by Maggie mm-hmm. and then during the 300, he was meant to meet Maggie for a tea party. <laughs> Hello, she's just sitting around with the stuffed animals, like getting the what? <laughs> he Come said it'd be here. <laughs> There's no conversation until Homer gets here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought this was, yeah, a really well plotted out episode. And yeah, that whole bizarre fascination with Lenny that, yeah, rings so true now. How about you, BT? What stands out to you for better or worse? It's going to be a solid Simpsons Broke My Brain moment of snooze. Need more snooze. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times. Yeah, uh, I was going to talk about yeah the setup for Homer and Maggie with you know the tea party and the uh, her not eating, but mm. that's already done. So I will th- instead throw to twenty six hours late work. No time for Maggie. Oh, oh where's Waldo? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it'd be so much easier with all these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was odd that they then had Waldo walking up behind. Of, uh, uh, Man, like... a bigger question is: Is Itchy and Scratchy real? Oh yeah, they're yeah. on the celebrity squares. Yeah, <laughs> I'm scared. I know you should be. <laughs> well, especially yeah, because in their show, Scratchy gets brutally murdered yeah. in every episode, and I guess yeah, really convincing practical effects. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It, it's just someone in a costume who gets brutally murdered. <laughs> it's Teller. You can stab it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Itchy and Scratchy is just Penn and Teller in disguise. It, it makes too much sense. Yep, and. While we're here, yeah, throwing to some of the guest stars of this episode. Yeah, Penn and Teller playing themselves. So good. Yeah. And, oh, this just made me think. It's amazing that, yeah, this is an episode from 1999. And, yeah, 20 years later, Penn and Teller are still, yeah, very much a part of pop culture. More so because they found ways to make themselves relevant again. Yeah. (laughs) They're part of the YouTube binge thing as well. Like, you'd go down that wormhole so easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time Fullis released a new season, I'm just, yeah, all over that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to see him in January as well. Oh, yeah, we are too. Ooh. Cool. Yeah, at the Sydney Opera House. Mm. Nice. But yeah, yeah, massive fan of those guys. And and also their documentary, The Aristocrats, is... <laughs> oh, is that them? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was Penn that mostly produced it. But yeah, what do we think of their guest appearance in this episode as well? Like, their performance and all that. Really, really solid voice acting. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Just, just great. Need to borrow a crossbow from the audience. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> I was like, he'll beat me later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the first teller. <laughs> yeah, really great. Yeah, playing into their canon as well with teller not usually talking. It's like, mm-hmm. don't leave me alone with him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll say that's what stands out to me is the sense of humour from Ron Howard as well. Uh, yeah. I thought, yeah, he really wasn't afraid to laugh at himself in this episode. Oh, yeah, I wrote I wrote down a line shitting on Ron Howard because I have a distinct memory of more of that. Oh. Mm. Is there more of him in other episodes? Yeah, other episodes. Yeah, um, The one with uh, Kim Basinger <laughs> <laughs> and Alec Baldwin. Yeah, where, yeah, they're his neighbour and they get into that big chase scene as well mm-hmm. where... I think Homer leads to Ron Howard getting run over repeatedly. And it all ends with a dramatic conclusion where a parent has to decide which child will live and which will die. (laughs) Did I mention the parent is a talking pie? (laughs) (laughs) You've done it again, Ron. But no, in this episode, Ron explaining to Homer he's the fat of the week is like, why do you think I moved from acting to directing? Mm, Stop being cute. And then, (laughs) yeah, the way like ninjas, I know that wasn't actually Ron Howard doing that, but still. We like to believe. <laughs> and yeah, driving with his kids, like leaning into the wackiness of this episode, the implied wackiness. Mm-hmm. No, I'm taking them to a special zoo that only Sudbury's know about. Daddy, <laughs> we're missing the Fantastopotamus. She only <laughs> sings twice a day. Oh, so good. <laughs> Wonderful. And yeah. they didn't cut to it immediately. No. Yeah. Like they would have. Leave it up to the audience. Like, I picture, yeah, this pink thing that can also, like, do ballet as yep. well and dances. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's my interpretation. As it does in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> and it controls the weather. <laughs> so play count. How many times before today do you think you've seen this episode? Many? Definitely more than 10. I probably wouldn't say more than 20. Yeah? I'd say probably about two because I, I distinctly remember the, um, you're polishing bone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Shino Ballo playlist <laughs> as well, yeah. Uh, a perfect 300. Hey. hey. Nice. None of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've seen this episode so many times. This is like one of the reasons I still love season 11. Mm. So, yeah, wackiness. What are the wacky moments from this episode? Uh, Mr. Burns had leg protectors installed so he could kick people <laughs> <laughs> in the reactor core. There's, like... The physicality of that is kind of weird because yeah. like, he'd have to be seating a little, yep. right? <laughs> and still kicking people in the butt. That whole sequence, though, with Burns discovering Homer, like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, his face. Yeah. Oh, the sounds it's that come so out of it. So malleable. <laughs> so much squish Ooh, to it. Who is that? Long nose, liver spot, long liver spot. ugly nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I do love, uh, I can't get in trouble if you can't see me. Yeah. I'm afraid he's got us, sir. <laughs> his teeth replaced with a cha-ching sound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yours when he don't? Gets... <laughs> I mean, what do you have with like the quack sound instead, or oh, yeah, a wooga? Like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, one just sounds like a goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tying into later in the episode when I'll be talking about what I've been into lately, but we'll move on. But, but yeah, just the idea that he can be so rich that he's got self-replacing dentures, like mm-hmm. oh, wonderful stuff there. Uh, any other wacky moments? Uh, where. <laughs> When Homer drops the bowling ball and mm. someone goes, ow! <laughs> <laughs> Under the floor? Like, yeah. I, well, I remember Frank Grimes saying in his episode that he lived below a bowling alley and mm. above another bowling alley, so... Now, that... now, Elliot, Frank Grimes is dead. No, but it's still a, a, a residential residence. <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah, Barney's Bolorama must be the above. Uh, Homer's to-do list involves ending crime and injustice. Did he tick it off? No, it was unticked. Oh, because the seeing Stevie Nicks naked was ticked three times. I mean, who hasn't? Really? Oh, <laughs> I'm dragging behind. I only say Mick Fleetwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the hard one. <laughs> uh, That's when I saw him. Huh? Kind of big one for the wackiness. Uh, there is no escape from the fortress of the most. <laughs> I'm, exactly. I'm surprised that wasn't the first one. Mm. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's all kinds of wacky. That's, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, well, we see how Molman lives. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he lives well. Yeah. He's a king. He has his own earthquake machine. Come on. <laughs> and the uh, even a teaspoon could cause a fatal tumour. And then they just immediately cut away from it beautifully. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah uh, I always wonder how many barrels he'd eaten up until the point, because some of them looked already opened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, man. Sorry, I can't believe I nearly forgot. Miss! Miss! <laughs> what? I was calling the waitress. This split you sold me is making me choke. What? I played 710 for this split. Hey, spare me your gutter mouth. <laughs> An amazing, amazing run of jokes, oh, this. Yeah. Just perfectly written. Like, yeah, I'm astounded like, that they managed to stretch that out as long as they did and for each one to just make it even more incrementally hilarious. And then you really feel it for Lenny when he gets pounded with the bowling ball afterwards. I mean, we knew it contained spider eggs, but the Haunter virus. <laughs> Chew goo gum-like substance. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. What yeah. is that? Classic Krusty the Clown still separating himself from actual product. Mm-hmm. I liked um, when Bart was like, I've learned to find role models in other people, like construction workers and Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, his sage life advice. If you tie a string around your finger, it'll make it turn purple. <laughs> the actual Homer winning the 300 game as well. That was a nice big wacky moment of the alleys exploding and mm-hmm. Ralph's little firework also exploding. The single 300 balloon. <laughs> oh, that can only be triggered after both bowling employees turn their keys at the same time, yeah. like a nuclear submarine or what, something. Um, what show is it where like a skeleton comes out of the ceiling when they do that? Family Guy. Was it Family Guy? Uh, there's a Peter was right moment. And he pulls a little drawstring and it drops a banner that says Peter is right. Oh, then yeah. he falls down. He's like, hey, where's the clown? <laughs> uh, yeah. They did that better. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so that, it was a pretty wacky episode, I've got to say. Um, mm-hmm. And speaking sort of more cartoony things, like I really loved the visuals of like Maggie's interpretation of Homer. Yeah. And Maggie because vision. they already set up the distance, like you can understand it's such a foreign figure to her. 
Hmm. Yeah, like the way he warps when he's doing his uh, boop, 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 boop. routine. Well, I mean, we've even seen this from Maggie before. Remember her birthday episode where everyone's taking photos in front of the birthday cake and she just sees mm. fire and all these one eyed uh, yeah. demons clicking at her? Yeah. <laughs> just need some uh, what powder on her? I don't know. Smackler's powder. Smackler's powder. Don't, don't make, make fun. fun. <laughs> Hot dogs. Um, <laughs> and also at the pool as well, when, yeah, Homer turns into like a Kraken almost. No, no. Kraken uh, from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. We've been through this. Yep. Or wow. the Shape of Water. Yeah. <laughs> Depends if it's got a. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast. Yeah, I know. They I was see for the people in did. the room, dick nuts. <laughs> <laughs> for the people at home, he did that motion in Shape of Water when the deaf girl explains the genitals. <laughs> you know, that's actually um going to be in the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Thirty. Mm. They're doing a Shape of Water parody, but with like Kang and Kodos. Uh oh. Uh. Uh. And yeah, apparently, yeah, Selma's gonna be the one falling in love with it. So what? She's gonna be old now. How, how did you? Uh, what happens? She'll be like te- <laughs> <laughs> tentacle. Ew. Exactly. <laughs> this is what you need to be ready for, because I cannot guarantee that joke isn't there. Mm-hmm. Actually, I haven't thought about that. Yeah, it's October. We gotta start planning the next Tree House of oh, Fun. Hmm. Oh, and sorry, in that pool moment as well, I liked the addition of all the like little babies and their parents and also Milhouse and his dad. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Very quick little thing as well. And beautiful little sign gag outside the... Um... Stepdad. Yeah, no stepdads. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> oh, and speaking of Millhouse, yeah, and when Homer's doing the lecture in the class, can you be my dad? Oh, you've already got a dad. He's just a dud. <laughs> you got the dud. <laughs> so, yeah, very wacky episode. There's probably more to say, but how about the heart of this episode? Did you guys feel the emotions? Ah, oh, come on. It's all there in the end with Maggie saving Homer and mm. actually just everything, Maggie, this entire episode is just adorable and ah, uh, gets you in the feels yeah no i really appreciated a storyline that somewhat centered around maggie for a change Mm because you know we just don't get enough of her other than just being a joke that she's way more capable than she is yeah Mm -hmm. i felt like yeah she's not going to be able to save an adult from you know a riptide but i kind of believed it in the moment i didn't Mm. feel like uh homer redeemed himself Mm. but i feel like uh maggie's character got a got a good amount of heart so Mm. i dig it up a bum yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Yep. There's a little bit there. Nice yeah. to have feelings again after the last episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to restart the heart. Yeah. But yeah, just to her being too capable when he's throwing her up in the air and she grabs the clothesline, starts hand over hand, <laughs> and Homer starts as well, and she's kind of <sighs> gives up and lets herself be drawn back. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> well, no, it's a good arc in this episode, especially when Homer's kind of being a bit insufferable as mm. well. like, And especially, yeah, milking his own success and all that. Like, It was good that I think they decided to yeah bring it in with some emotions at the end. And Maggie's a perfect vehicle for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were both about to say something. <laughs> One yawn, the other blew his nose. <laughs> oh. Ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yes. Hell yeah. Yeet. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you can start flossing now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like right on the border of the classic era, so it's still like... I don't know, it's weird how it still feels like New Simpsons to me. Yeah. But yeah, are characters behaving like themselves? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Marge was a little too easy to forgive. Yeah, oh. but again, it wasn't the plot, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it serves the gag so yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. And like in an episode with Maggie as well behaving like herself, it, I actually feel like we got to know Maggie a little bit better in this episode. Mm. So much amazing animation with just her rolling her eyes and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just the right amount of attitude. Yeah, uh, when Homer goes to hug her in the water and he just sinks again, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny on animation like I, I wrote down at the start <laughs> grainy goodness because the intro sequence is just that like two pixel mm-hmm. sequence but then it goes into you know quite smooth animation yeah no it was always weird and especially when we get into the late teens episodes like season 19 or whatever the, they're still using that original intro sequence from the early 90s and then mm-hmm. jump straight into the cleaner more suspicious animation <laughs> yep <laughs> And yeah, lastly, I will say about Maggie as well. Like, I really loved her determination jumping into the water as well. And like her buoyancy as well, I just thought was really well directed. Mm. Like, because she is still a baby that's wearing floaty. So she like does the big dive thing, but it's just like immediately jumps back up. <laughs> but yeah, the music swelling. Uh, yeah, great moment there. But yes or no, would you watch this one again? Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. 
And yeah, well, I'd watch it again. So if we'd watch an episode again, we like to think about what playlist we'd put this in. What are some episodes that remind you of this one? I'm not sure if this is an accidental playlist. I'm assuming it is, but the we've pope? got a Pope playlist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> we had dead Pope ding, last ding, ding, time, and, uh, and this time uh, Bert, Bert Reynolds, Reynolds apologizing to the Pope. <laughs> and said he'd place the windshield. Class act. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this was a featuring our other guest stars for the episode, Pat O'Brien and Nancy O'Dell, who hosted those sort of entertainment tonighty accessy yeah, okay. Hollywood shows. Mm. Yep. Good for them. <laughs> great great for Australians. <laughs> anyway, other playlists? Uh, Millhouse Zingers. Yeah? Almost equivalent to It Smells in Here. <laughs> <laughs> Barney's Bolarama. Yeah, yeah. Big old bowling playlist. Put this with mm-hmm. the Ping Pals and all that. Uh, Maggie playlist. Good Maggie episodes. There's mm. got to be at least three of those. <laughs> Homer doesn't redeem himself for the things that he does playlist. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Homer eating things that he shouldn't playlist. Um, <laughs> found a large number of shark eggs in your system. <laughs> <laughs> they were there before I got to the ocean. I don't want to pry in your personal Then don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, any other playlists? Mm. Weird drinks in Moe's. Because yeah. he does specify... To save his tears in a shot glass for someone who still has a shred of hope, which is a very niche cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Mo drinks. Yeah. Oh, I love hey, that. can I get a shot glass full of tears? Uh, how much hope do you have? Just a shred? That'll do it. Perfect. <laughs> I love in that moment as well. I was like, oh, sorry, I wasn't listening to what you were saying. I was counting the cocktail radishes. Two, three. Yep. Three radishes. <laughs> three big ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, BT, what would you like to change about this episode? Who? Who? Good question. I don't really think I want to change anything. You will probably say the suicide bit. I do not think it was a suicide bit. So, uh, you know, discourse. (laughs) He was Uh, singing the end by the doors. Look, some people (laughs) like the doors and other people are right. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, at me, Doors fans. (laughs) Jim Morrison was a hack. (laughs) The key key player is the only worthy part of that band. BT, we do not slam doors in this house. <laughs> uh, if anyone does love the doors, I got got vengeance because I, when I threw my head back at that joke, I smacked into the uh, the music stand behind me, so my head hurts now. <laughs> but Jim Morrison is still a hack. And for those at home, I am stealing um, a very popular tweet that <laughs> that is a very very good joke as well. Yep. Yeah. Look, I mean, just to jump on that, look, I, I jump on that. Great. Um, <laughs> on that, not off that. I really wish it was sold a little bit differently, Homer's jumping thing, because I think it was just a little bit too bleak, because especially you got the line of people committing suicide, the jumpers, and I don't know. I think if it was just sold as a more introspective moment, because, yeah, I did the, get the vibe that all of a sudden there, Homer just wanted to off himself, and it's like, my sticking point with the episode. Uh, how about you, Eddie? What would you like to change? I'm reluctant to say anything because this is truly from the golden era of mm-hmm. Simpsons, mm-hmm. but if anything, I didn't really believe at the end that Maggie and Homer had redeemed themselves to the point like yeah. where he'd become not a monster anymore, but I'm just picking he was it. trying. <laughs> picking it pebbles on the ground. Yeah. It was good. No, I mean, it's one of the problem with these better episodes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, how about you, Tom? What would you like to change? Maybe even just on that, like, just flick to Maggie Vision one more time and he's mm. like a friendly monster. Oh, and yeah. Just at the very end, just for like half a second. But yeah, it's so hard to touch. Yeah, it really is. All right, we're here. BT, do you have any other notes? Don't I always. 317, <laughs> pointing out police stupidity. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where's the fire? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Are Pooh and Ass taken? Yep. Oh, oh that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all said that going bowling? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's just, yeah, again, Simpsons lexicon. Mm-hmm. A lot falls from this episode. Are you comparing yourself to Jesus? Well, in bowling ability. <laughs> At least you need a hand with your homework. Sure, you can help me find three words where why is the vowel? He's slowly steps out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, yeah, when he's playing with Maggie later, just, yeah. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Immediate blind close. <laughs> Yep. And my last note is just how cute it is when Maggie bowls her ball and she kind of mirrors Homer's practice ball, practice ball, real, mm. real, real, real kind Aww, of action. So it's super cute. cute. Yep. Yeah. It, really, it really sells their bond in just in silence. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about you, Eddie? Any other notes? Edna's reading Fear of Flying Teachers Edition. 
<laughs> which was so random. It, ha- it has all the answers in it? <laughs> yeah, I just don't really understand. <laughs> I, I realized at the start when there's all those people walking around, someone bumps into Mole Man and like threatens him. And I was like, why are you threatening Mole Man? Yeah. And then later on, <laughs> it, it's understandable his anger when he's like, you'll never escape the fortress. <laughs> fortress <laughs> the mole. You have the earthquake machine to get revenge. <laughs> Yeah. Why Why were the streets full of pushy New York? That is yeah. a good question. Did, did they import them? I mean, where did they New come from? Yeah. New York, I guess. <laughs> no, oh, I, God. I, I really set myself up for did. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a very odd inclusion. And, and to explain the traffic of this episode, like, yeah, I, I don't get it. And did you have any other notes, Tom? Honestly, just being confused in New Yorkers. That's my main yeah. thing. <laughs> also, I'd love a just a short, like, little Jason Momoa cameo. Maggie call Aquaman. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> if we can just, like, George Lucas put him in there. Yeah, yeah like, after she rescues Homer and, yeah, Momoa's like, I came as fast as I can. And I'm assuming that's how he sounds in Aquaman. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I thought Jason Momoa was in this room. He's going to be like, hi, Jason Momoa. Hey. Do you want a mimosa? Mm. Uh. <laughs> just force ghost him in there it'd be great mm. all right it's time for my final notes i love the transition of yeah marge going well you should probably talk about this with your life partner and then it would cut to mo and then even mo reinforcing that well homer is your life partner uh, yeah yeah they've talked about this mm-hmm. yeah they're, they're, everyone's in agreement I've liked in Bart's room as well. He was clearly playing a PS1. They went to the detail of, yeah, drawing the console and the controller pretty accurate. Hmm. Hey, Maggie, this is Homie Wommy, the Teletubby. <laughs> oh, what was the part? What was the line after that? Just, and I'm hey, old man in case you heard otherwise. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the tummy vision. Yeah, Homer getting electrocuted playlist. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to rank this thing. And Eddie, it's your turn to go first. I forget what the ranking scale was. <laughs> well, it starts down the bottom at failure, but <laughs> next comes participant. If you thought it was just meh, then we have the good positive rankings with OK, bronze, good, silver, excellent gold, but for the best, of the very best, you give Cubic Zirconia. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice. I've done this a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to listen to it a few times. <laughs> Can I go high silver? It's uh, silver or is only one or the other. There's what no was, highs. What was the other one? Gold would be the next step up. Mm. This is a tough one. I'm going to go gold. Let me be yeah, I'm like generous. Go gold? And how about you, Tom? <laughs> I was almost thinking cubic zirconia, but yeah, I I just don't think it has quite that much shine, but gold for sure. I really, really like this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going gold as well, and this is one of the ones where I know it's not like as amazing as some of the classic era episodes, but holy fuck, the jokes are really carrying mm-hmm. it in this one, and BT, finish it off. Yeah, I was sitting on the Gilva border the whole time, but I think the jokes are just... I was pretty laughing, because I knew they were coming. And anything <laughs> that has that has that enduring quality that we love about the show, so I will give this a gold. Wow. Very proud of this episode. And it was tough, because... Uh, free... Mm, yeah. Free... <laughs> Noises. Free, like, yeah. free. How much do I love it? Do I love it enough? <laughs> All right, that'll be a unanimous gold. It'll be only the second episode from season 11 to receive that title. Mm. The other one being recently reviewed The Mansion Family, where hey. Homer gets put in charge of Mr. Burns' mansion. <laughs> All right, well, it's time we move to the classic era, and what a classic we have lined up for you today. Now, this is one of those ones where the title of the episode immediately gives away the plot, so I'm going to slowly roll out the title, and first one to guess which episode this is wins. But Meryl Streep comes to Springfield. No. Okay. <laughs> First word, Bart. Second word, gets. I mean, I know it's not an elephant because we've done that. Bart gets made. Bart gets famous. Bart gets famous. Oh, is this one where Bart meets Meryl Streep? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep, we'll be back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And we are back, and we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening. This was Season 5, Episode 12, Bart Gets Famous. First released in February of 1994, this was directed by Susie Dieter, her first directing credit, actually, and written by... John John Swartzwelder! In this episode, Bart Gets Famous, and he says the line, say the line, Bart, what do we think? I didn't do it. Uh, It had to be done. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean... Great, solid. I I am wondering how much of this is I may, might have a bit of viewing fatigue on this one. Yeah, I'm a bit. Mm, I'm insane, trying to like actually. be a bit more objective. I know I've seen this way more than a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I mean, skip to the play count question since we're here. How many times have you seen it? Way more than a lot. <laughs> 
I'd put it around five. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I genuinely don't know how many times. <laughs> Probably a lot, but I'm not sure how yeah. many. Yeah. So I'm just trying to like get as objective as possible without A, rose-colored glasses, or B, fatigue. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's enough that the box factory thing was almost not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know what type of factory you're thinking about. We just make boxes. We get to see a finished box here, sir? <laughs> no, they get assembled in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Which, very good joke. Yeah, look, season five is the season that I remember when it came out. I remember it being new. Mm-hmm. like Because Simpsons, you know, it took a few years before it actually came out in Australia. So mm-hmm. when it did finally come to our shores, it actually hit the ground running in syndication. So, like, season five, I always remember as the first season where it was new episodes week after week Mm. and I was videotaping them and I had my little label with a little drawing of Bart and Homer on it and was my Simpsons tape and yeah so I've seen it so many times even thinking of you young I pitch you bald with a beard (laughs) (laughs) in that exact tie-dye shirt it's adorable No, at some point in my 20s, it all flipped. It used to be not able to grow a beard at all and a decent amount of head of hair yeah, up there. I got the same problem. I got the bald spot and now I'm getting more nose and eyebrow hair. <laughs> I like to imagine that it just kind of moved off the top of your head. Yeah. Down yeah. To the... <laughs> as with ages and as I get tired, my hair follicles did too. And it's just like, yeah, fuck We're not it. going all the way up there. <laughs> just dropped it. Just rest somewhere <laughs> around the face. I feel so young. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it, boy. <laughs> yeah, look at this. The ravages of age. <laughs> I can grow a damn fine mustache. That's all I've got going for me. Also, yeah. what you're with will one day not be it. And what will be it <laughs> will sound strange and uh, unusual to you. Ooh, what a reference. <laughs> <laughs> what's that from anyway so <laughs> let's hook into this episode tom we'll start with you this time For better or worse what's a moment that stands out to you oh i feel like this was the first time where i really related to going into the studio and like <laughs> oh say the line tom <laughs> i wish i was dead yeah, i wish <laughs> i was dead i wish i was dead yep. just the repetition of that and oh man just i've been filming a lot more recently and i <laughs> i feel it I feel that hard, just all grouping around the catering table, drinking endless coffee and just, uh, it's 4am. Yeah, <laughs> where's my day and edge? <laughs> but no, it's sort of, you know, show business does look all glamorous from the outside, but I think, yeah, that's the thing. It's so repetitive and you're doing the same things over and over and over again. Again and again. And and again, and again, and again and again and again. From different angles. So I think this episode, yeah, pair well with radioactive man in showing mm. yeah behind the scenes of this business of show well, it pairs mm. well with our last episode because involves someone getting famous briefly yeah yeah it's almost like it's planned mm. almost I <laughs> honestly did not like it Whatever. was like oh <laughs> we have a season 11 episode we need to do we can mm. do a five as well okay these two yeah, there was no reference to the pope in this one so yeah that is a problem <laughs> oh if you looked hard <laughs> But no, one of the main reasons I actually picked this episode, because in the last podcast we did where we watched the episode all about Lisa, and I know you guys didn't see that one, and I'm guessing you haven't seen that one, but they sort of do the same thing with Lisa in that episode, where they make Lisa Krusty's assistant, and then she gets a taste of being on the stage and stuff, but... Yeah, I really wanted to get to doing this episode because I felt like they did this a lot more eloquently and sort of showing the downfalls of it as well from both sides of Bart getting a really solid job in the in- on the inside of the industry working for the crew and then seeing the downfall of that and then getting a good job being talent and then seeing the downfall of that mm. from, yeah, not only the angle of him getting over the repetition but also the, the crowd losing their interest in the repetition. Rep- rep- Repetition. Rep- 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 yeah. <laughs> Repetition. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> How about you, Eddie? What stands out to you from this episode for better or worse? Uh, I love I I Mumandant. <laughs> a little reference to communism and Bart was wearing a red hat as well Ooh. <laughs> Real? I missed all this <laughs> yeah it was right at the start he came out and Marge said something about stop whistling that that <laughs> tune, yeah, tune. Yeah. Mm. and he says aye aye mum and dunt <laughs> oh mm-hmm. <laughs> aye comrade interesting yes. <laughs> I digged it yeah you've been really picking out the, the very obscure like the fear of flying as well like <laughs> mm. my <laughs> eyes are open yeah yeah, I love that intro sequence as well with Homer. Ooh, horoscope. Today will be just like every other day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, BT? What stands out to you for better? Or I'm going to go for a quick two far. Uh, one is just a brilliantly timed joke of uh, Bart's perfect escape. He's trying mm. to get out of the box factory and just hides in the laundry. And then he just gets out and goes out the door. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a question about that. Why is there a laundry basket in a box factory? There isn't at your work? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I mean, Why is there a shower also at the nuclear power plant? <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because no. chemical contaminations. Oh, I suppose. You know, we've literally seen scenes of them in the shower. I work oh, at yeah. a call center and we have three showers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's both. No laundry basket, <laughs> Modern offices where they encourage you to bike to work and then you need to shower. Mm. It's uh, becoming more of a thing, I guess. Box to the box. Bu- but you uh, will have to speak bike up. to the box. Sorry? Wa- you will have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no, the thing I really wanted to point out was yoink. <laughs> uh, yoink. <laughs> didn't the Simpsons mostly popularize the usage of that word, if not invented outright? Ooh, that's an interesting thing Ooh. that I wish I knew off the top of my head. I know it was meh, they definitely popularized and maybe even invented, but I think Yoink as well was a big... Uh... Yeah, we need someone to Google things. Yeah. <laughs> Googling what Simpsons Index have had the same to, song yeah. for a long time. Uh, apparently its origin is in 1954. You lied to us, PT. <laughs> Not knowingly, damn it. But when it well, was he did say it was. They, yeah, they helped popularize it. Mm. <laughs> but I just love the way that yeah, Camp Brockman goes yoink, like as in <laughs> something has happened. <laughs> yeah, Kuala Kuala Lumpur Kuala Lumpur Kuala Lumpur France. France. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love this whole sequence with Kent Brockman as well, and yeah, Bumblebee Man <laughs> busting in to do the news report as well. So eloquently and mm. lovely. Mm. It's just can't give up that physical comedy bit where he falls off the chair. No. Hey, Joao! S- such a good juxtaposition. Mm. Of- <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think more people would watch the news if it was <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> true. delivered by a slapstick comedian in a Bumblebee <laughs> costume. I'm not going to lie, I definitely would. <laughs> I really want to see Leland Chin in a Bumblebee costume <laughs> I'm pretty sure she wore it for the 2016 uh, fashion shows <laughs> she wears some outrageous outfits that's a little bit of a Lily Chin comedy for you well there's always a lot of buzz around her hey <laughs> <laughs> and what stands out to me look just Martin and Skinner's enthusiasm yeah. for this <laughs> box factory. Especially because they've gone before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're just ready to do it all again. They're, and yeah, they run down out of the bus <laughs> and like they're the first to be on the yellow yeah. line tour of his office. Want to see the finished box. And yeah, Slim Skinner's just, when he's going around the yellow line, just, hmm. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like, again, you can imagine the recording booth is like, now just give us like uh, five to ten impressed hums. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Mm? Mm. <laughs> and even like the kids also trying to have fun with it it's like oh boxes have been used for many interesting things holding children's candy do any of these boxes have candy in them <laughs> no these are all going to have nails <laughs> no we only make boxes that ship nails <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I'm also impressed that Bart even learned something. He was able to yeah. quote Ooh. what type of box is uh, lucky. Double corrugated gatefold. Ah, there we go. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I'm still a bit weird on the physicality of the boxes as well, though. Like, because you see them, they've got the four sides assembled, and it's just the two flaps at the side. They're going to send them for the edge crush test. But That's that is so inefficient. Yeah. yeah. It's not how that works. So they're partially, partially assembling them. And then sending them to Flint? <laughs> I've been to a box factory. Uh, yeah. How was it? Thrilling. How was the line around the guy's office? Ooh. Was it yellow or did they use another color? That was red. Did you see a finished box? <laughs> All the room that was different from any other room? Oh, wait. We took that out. <laughs> okay, it's just like every other room. I love that character. Oh, yeah. I really want, I want to know what that thing was. Yeah. <laughs> what was the thrilling thing they had but decided to take away? I bet it was a water cooler. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Or yeah. like a box finisher. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no, that's a bit risky. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Put yeah. it in the playlist of unexplained inventions, like that thing that Homer invents in his <laughs> fantasy would change the world. <laughs> Wackiness. Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? We already mentioned speaking up because he's wearing a towel and <laughs> Brockman's Danish. Fuck, that's a good one to punch joke, by the way. Just, yeah, Marge and Homer both happen to have showers at the same time. Yep. <laughs> kind of beautiful about their relationship, really. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the conveyor belt of the box factory was like randomly wavy. I don't know if you noticed, but yeah. I, at first I thought, okay, maybe it's just like an animation thing, yeah. like that they just drew it that way, but then the box actually goes down at one point, comes back up for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I love they go past like the amusement park and the fireworks testing ground and the slide factory, which has smokestacks. We were saying before, every, no matter what the business, everyone has huge smokestacks. Yeah. <laughs> 
even for especially for making slides. Mm. <laughs> That's for <most> union sense. <laughs> breaking. Yeah. <laughs> Homer's um when he flashes back to him being in a one man band. Yeah. Yes. And he's wearing like fifty different instruments and the whole thing is like just wacky, but his music's actually good. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Yeah, tighten up was not a bad song. No. <laughs> Could have been a great hit and if the monkey hadn't attacked him. Yeah, yeah people were too quick to dismiss him as yeah. well. <laughs> I don't think Giuseppe and Peppy's show would have been that much better. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> cheeky, cheeky bit of whap. The um, whack uh, <laughs> impaled on my Nobel Peace Prize. How ironic! <laughs> Lisa, yeah. come back, Lisa. Why? Come back. <laughs> I'm so much happier here. Oh, oh, Lisa, that is a mood. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate the reprise as well, where Bart's like, "Oh, box factory. I'll just use my imagination and escape yeah. into fantasy." Children, instead of the box factory, we'll be going to the box factory. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, he just happened to have a little TV there. Mm -hmm. like, hmm. Well, I mean, that's something that everyone has now, is a little TV ready to go. Yeah. Were they ever a yeah, real thing? Oh, yeah, TVs yeah. That size, yeah. Little portable TVs. Huh. Everything. Prove uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've never seen one that size, but I know my brother had one that was, like, part of a boombox. Oh. It was the weirdest fucking thing. Yeah, it was a little TV with an aerial, but it also had a, a double tape deck that you could record. It's just... Wow. So he could, like, watch things between dance battles in the hood? <laughs> yeah. <Does that> mean <laughs> in, in the ghetto of Borkham Hills. <laughs> <laughs> so he could record TV episodes? No, it was only for the tape deck that you could record. I don't know, ma actually, maybe he could have recorded the audio on that. Did that TV. company invent podcasting? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just walk out in the middle of the street press play here's my podcast <laughs> yeah back when podcasts were on tapes they were they were called boom casts <laughs> yeah yeah that's right the pod hadn't been invented yet mm. so i love the wackiness of the escalation of bart's fame as well how especially crusty he knows a good thing when he sees it and it's like he's mine he's mine and i claim all the subsidiary rights and yeah <laughs> And just immediately capitalizing in on it and just milking it for all it's worth. Like the I didn't do it dances. And yeah. <laughs> it was so stoic, so yeah. angry looking. Ah, <laughs> some aggressive dancing for such a joyful expression. <laughs> Gig's a gig, I suppose. Mm. Yep. True that. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a musician, a job is a gig. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing mo Homer moments. And his rant about the poor and just the family just blank staring at him. <laughs> Anyway, mm. that's something I really appreciate about this episode. It really took its time with some of these jokes. Mm. Yeah. Even that repetition joke, which I should hate, but I loved. I, know, I love that bit. It's like, oh, my I loved job. it. My job. Repetition is my job. Yeah, that... I'm going to go out there and give the best performance of my life. <laughs> you give them the best performance of your life. The best performance of my life. <laughs> yeah, that repetition joke. I mean, I really shouldn't like it, but I did. I really loved it. That oh, repetition yeah. joke. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm, the, hill, the hill I will die on is that I didn't do it was never funny Yeah, <laughs> in, in its first instance. Mm. And it was the ones after it which were funnier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. It's an interesting thing as well. I mean, I think it's probably been pointed out to death, but like, just that it was actually Krusty's line in season one. R remember when Krusty gets busted? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was his line from the show. Don't blame me. I didn't do it. Mm. Yeah. Well, that explains where Bart got it from. Yeah. Plot twist. Uh -huh. So he's just, yeah, reusing Krusty's material. The and pieces fit. That's <laughs> why Krusty owns all the subsidiaries. Oh. <laughs> he does. And yeah, those are some good subsidiaries to get a hold of. All three volumes of Bart's I Didn't Do It album. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that's a parallel of the Simpsons album. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> some of those were just getting fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was disappointed to find out that wasn't MC Hammer in the episode either. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. Wait, what year was this? 1994. Surely he was bankrupt by then. Or was he trying <laughs> to do his like reboot as a gangster rapper? Which happened. It's amazing. Yeah? Yeah. Look up Todd in the Shadows series called Train Records. He covers MC Hammer's attempt to go legit. Mm, it, really? It, to his credit, the guy tried so hard. But, uh, no. <laughs> he could not come back from flogging all the uh, products he did. Yeah. <laughs> and those pants. Mm, yeah. And those pants. <laughs> Any other wackiness? No teamsters. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I remember him having someone wear cleats in this um, as well. Am I... I think it might happen later. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair point. I kind of remember that too. I really love the joke of 
Bart gets the cell phone call in the middle of class and it's like, Bart, we need to get your fingerprints on a candlestick. Oh, yeah. Meet you in the conservatory. Everything's going to be all right. Just a little <laughs> bit of clue. Yeah. <laughs> and for our Australian audience, clue dough. Yeah. Ooh. What was the dough for? I never understood. But interesting, with Where's Waldo, we took off the dough. Yeah. Originally, it was a spin off of Play Doh. <laughs> Which in Australia we call play do. Ooh. I think it's the Australian thing of just adding an unnecessary O on the end of everything. Yeah. Well, Maybe it was Waldo here become Waldodo. <laughs> play dodo. As dead as the dodo. Dodo dodo. Anyway. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Guest stars of the episode as well. We had Conan O'Brien. <laughs> and this was a really interesting one because Conan had only just gotten his show when they were writing this episode and even after he recorded it he'd only done like five maybe ten episodes of it oh, and man. it was just really no one was actually sure if conan's show was going to be a thing hmm. and 31 years later he's <laughs> not only still got a show but he's one of the most successful podcasters in the world <laughs> nice even though he's only done it for like 30 episodes <laughs> yeah, well, if you want to learn something, Conan, you're welcome to guest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought Conan O'Brien's performance in this episode was awesome. My God, he has an incredibly quotable line. Yeah. <laughs> no, only I am allowed to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Just perfect. So how about the heart of this episode? Did you guys feel any bumps? Right at the end where Marge has like the box full of all uh, Bart's merchandise. It's like, you can remember when you were ever on Special Little Guy. Hmm. But outside of that, not, well, I suppose you get a little bit in the terms of... Uh, the showbiz chewing people out. I like that they reprise the box factory when they walk outside. It's like, one day you're everyone's big love. The next, you're some schmo working in a box factory. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, there was one other Marge line, which was, um, you're making people happy and that's all that matters. Yeah. 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 And he doesn't I launch into it. Oh, look at me. I'm making <laughs> people happy. <laughs> No, that's it. She just had a solid point. You know, I know it's hard for you, but, you know, you're doing a good service and immediately turns him around. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. I, I love how crushing Krusty's line is. Mm -hmm. Just as he pushes him out the door. Oh, don't worry about that. You're just finished is all. <laughs> <laughs> Guess showbiz can be kind of rough. A slam. <laughs> but again, it even reprises the bit where it's like, hang on, I want to finish this outside for a closing effect. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> A lot of good door jokes in this episode as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, come by the bathroom. I want to yell at you some more. <laughs> Why are you ragamuffin? And <laughs> the guy who plays Sideshow Mel. Yeah. Same voice actor as Homer? I don't know. When he was yelling through the door, it sounded distinctly Homer. It's probably, like, hard for, like, an actor to, like, develop not only a character, but, like, their many moods. Mm. <laughs> All right. That okay. same character, but what if he was having a lactose intolerance? Well, yeah, I mean, we were talking about <laughs> in um, Hurricane Nettie where they had to figure out how does Ned sound when angry. Yeah. And just really struggling with that because it was just some just completely new ground. Oh, absolutely. Sideshow Mel is Dan Castellaneta. Yeah. There you go. Picked it. Mm. Called it. <laughs> so, ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It felt as much like an episode of Simpsons as Mr. Burns' face felt like Mr. <laughs> Burns' face. Liver spot. Liver spot. Yeah, it was one of the ones where, yeah, it's putting one of the characters out of their elements, but I liked how it was sort of acknowledging their history and how they had to sort of reset it a little with mm. Bart and Krusty. It's like, uh, who are you? You know, <laughs> I got you out of jail. I, <laughs> I saved your whole career, man. <laughs> Reunited with your father. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, you're this Danish. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. <laughs> Wonderful stuff there. Yeah, I don't have too much to say about the integrity because this is, yeah, it's season five. They're establishing, even, yeah, in their fifth season, still establishing their integrity here. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem with any of it, honestly. Yep. Yeah, even Bart sort of like, yeah, watching him grow and develop and change throughout this whole thing. It still feels very Bart. Mm. Yeah. So, yes or no, would you watch this episode again? Yes. Yes. With a bit of time, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be a minute. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I'd watch this again and maybe put it in a playlist. What playlist does this go in? Fame. Fame. Field trips. Yes. And surprising accidental playlist with the fads as well. And we kind of almost hit it in the first episode. We did tonight as well, which mm. was surprising. Grimby cheating on his wife? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, he did say that he didn't do it. It's true. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> He's absolved. Yeah. <laughs> and I was reading as well that his wife's outfit was based on the outfit that Jackie Onassis was wearing when her husband's brains got blown out. Oh, man, really? Ooh. Yeah. Damn. Because, you know, there's also that photo of Lyndon Johnson getting sworn in and Jackie Onassis is wearing the same thing. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, dark. Yeah. <laughs> The brains of the last guy are there in the room with you when you get signed up as president. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Crazy times. Indeed. Um, Homer's musical talent playlist? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've found that as well. He's got a very... He is a savant. history. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what it is. He's a musician. He's just not that into sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I, w- I wish Homer would follow his musical abilities a bit more, but, you know, I guess doing the B-sharps was hard enough. And Yeah, yeah. BT, what would you like to change about this episode? Ooh, oh, that's tough. Because, like I said, uh, this one, it felt like it was dragging a bit in the third act, but I think it's just because I've seen it so many times. Mm. Like, we get to the Conan O'Brien bit, and I'm just waiting for the, sit perfectly still, only I may dance. But that's not the show's fault yeah. that I'm waiting for that line, because I've already made the note, because I know what's coming. So, I don't think i really want to change anything it's just it does feel like it lags a little bit at the end but i literally just think it's simply from my own having viewed this so many times yeah sure how about you eddie i think they could have done more with the i didn't do it i I feel like the the the, craze itself yeah the gag was just recycled in its same like exactly the same as the original was it was just Mm. you know something being broken i didn't do it but i feel like there's so many other uses of i didn't do it that they could have done i would have liked to see that explored more yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Tom? But waving from a grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I'd like to have seen it for the first time and remember seeing it for the first time because mm. I feel like it's just been a part of my life. I don't remember seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Because it came out when I was minus two. It's <laughs> a rough age. <laughs> I can barely remember that age. I think I just blocked it out out of trauma. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have too much to say. It's another one where I just I just simply don't feel qualified mm. to even punch this one up, especially a short Swartz World of Script. Yeah, I guess I agree with you about the uh, lagging a bit, and I guess it's because we've had a bit of that repetition with the line, And but mm. I guess that's kind of the point. So, mm. yeah, leave it with me for a couple of days. Yeah, I might well, have something better. Because <laughs> when I was looking over my notes, I'm like, okay, roughly where do I start, you know, falling off in terms of interest? I think maybe after the I didn't do it montage, but that's third act by that point. Mm. Yeah. So, like, the idea that I feel like it's slagging in its last five minutes, I think that's entirely simply viewership. Well, I suppose that's it as well, because, like, the I didn't do it thing comes, that is, like, the start of the third act. Mm. And the second act is mostly, yeah, Bart being Krusty's assistant. So it's almost like we are seeing three different stories here. Pretty much. Box Factory, assistant, I didn't do it. I just realized we haven't actually touched the ending at all. Like the whole catchphrase, everyone's got a catchphrase. And yeah. We, we oh, cut to Lisa and she's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she had a really great catchphrase. I say that all the time. Yeah. Well, if anyone wants me, I'll be in my room. Ah, it's impaled on my Nobel Peace Prize. How I want it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Says that all the time. You know what would have been a solution, actually? And yeah. also a playlist, I realized. No B story playlist. Yeah. Maybe if I had a B story, it would have uh, flushed it out a bit. But then where would you put it? You, there's like no space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a packed episode, but I guess, I don't know, maybe seeing the impact on the family as well and like... Yeah, or it would have given, you know, his fame a minute to breathe because, mm. yeah, like we said, that entire I didn't do it is the whole third act. Yeah. Well, we get so. a bit, little bit of it actually with Homer trying to get Lisa to record a catchphrase. <laughs> oh, that's something funny Bart would say, like, bucka bucka or wizzle wazzle. Wizzle wazzle, that's what passes for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I love the crowd at the end. And, yeah, about that show at the end as well, what was Krusty's plan? Just to <laughs> have him roll out there and just say it? <laughs> I guess, because everyone just left afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Like, surely there was at least half an hour of entertainment with this thing planned. And <laughs> mm. Yeah, there were two curtains, so it looked like it was ready to split open to reveal something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crusty, yeah, not caring about the art of the show. Just like, yep, this thing's a trending. We can, yeah, milk it yep. for all it's worth. Monetize it. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. BT, do you have any other notes? Uh, of course. Time is great. A box! My boy's a box! Damn you! A box! Oh, and the follow-up when he confronts much. I've got some <laughs> bone-chilling news. <laughs> what, Homer? Oh, nothing. nothing. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Say the Lion Bart has become a bit of a meme in that little classroom. Yeah. 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 So, no, uh, it's funny. Yeah. An episode about catchphrase culture that it itself spawned a bunch of catchphrases. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the head of Kitty Carlisle in Bart's vision of the future looks a lot like the head in a jar for Futurama. Not the same technology, but obviously this is only 2036. They haven't made it all the way to year 3000 mm. where they perfected that technology. Yeah. So uh, laying the seeds for Futurama this early? Probably not. Probably <laughs> just a coincidence. But you know what? Conspiracy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I wonder if that'd be an amazing background joke if they fixed that into Futurama of Kitty Carlisle, but it's in, <laughs> yeah, this version of the head in jar. Yeah. yeah. Mm. How about you, Eddie? Any other notes? I just really liked the line when Marge said, do you see yourself having a career in boxes? He said, that'll always be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a wonderful joke. Like, especially because, yeah, anytime a kid shows an interest in something, parents are mm-hmm. like, oh, you think you'll do that for a job? And like, yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. And how about you, Tom? Any other notes? Mm, now that's Danish. <laughs> <laughs> and also just the fact that Australian politics, so sorry, international people, but um, <laughs> the fact that ScoMo actually did a tour of the box factory oh, yeah. on the day of one of the climate summits recently, and he actually went to a box factory. So I guess it must have been great. Yeah. He's a meme. The two big headlines from his trip to America helped open a box factory there mm. and gave Trump $150 million to help with a mission to Mars. In his defense, that thing they took out of that room that made it really special... That box factory had it. <laughs> so ScoMo knows what it is, and he won't tell us because he's a cunt. Yes. <laughs> tell us what you know, ScoMo. <laughs> All right. Uh, apparently, he likes ScoMo, so we call him Shmomo. <laughs> Go Mo. And he called it. His plane's called the Shark One or something because he's just a dickhead. Oh. Such a dickhead. God, I, I, you say that, and I just envision him wearing a popped collar. <laughs> <laughs> You know he did. You know I, I, he did. I guarantee you that was his trend. Oh. <laughs> Is it because he he's a Sharks fan, Cronulla Sharks? Yes. Oh. At least that's a little better, but it's still wanky as fuck. <laughs> Sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for my final notes. Yeah, again, Martin in this episode. Ooh, Box Factory, this may well prove fascinating. <laughs> Wonderful. Um. <laughs> What did Krusty do to that toilet that would take a couple of hours to clean? <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. But he said he didn't know what he was thinking. Yeah, like, yeah. It's <laughs> like he was trying to maybe he was trying to like brew alcohol and just put a bunch of smashed fruit in the sink. Microbrew. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hope so because <laughs> that's where it began. <laughs> Yeah, Krusty actually doesn't plan his shows out well. He's like, just say I'm waiting for a bus, then I belt you with pies for the next five minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, when Bart is studying up for Conan and Homer's just eating two sandwiches at the same time. <laughs> I missed that. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. It, well, it... that is the dream. <laughs> no, wait, <laughs> two dream. halves of a sandwich? No, no, two distinct, like, he's got one on white bread and one on rye bread. That man knows how to live. <laughs> I like Best. sandwiches. I've never tried to double, like, double header. Best to both worlds. Yeah. Double fist your sandwiches, people. That's oh. official advice from the Simpsons Index. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they, uh, before they got out of that episode as well, took another dig at kung fu fighting for no particular reason. It was a, something that was big that then wasn't. <laughs> mm. uh, poor Carl Douglas. I wonder if he's alive. Probably. Mm. It's time to rank this thing. And BT, your turn to go first. Man, I'm again on that silver gold border. Ah, again, it's tough. I am going to go with a gold. I'm going to follow uh, the instinct that says what I don't like about this is probably my fault because of just having seen it so many times and knowing it so well. But it has spawned so many wonderfully quotable moments. Yeah, I'm going to go with the gold. I think I'm happy with that. Eddie. Who am I kidding? I'm never happy. I'm going to I'm gonna break the trend of us being unanimous because <laughs> I'm going to go with... Oh. <laughs> uh, no, am yeah, I? Let's go for it. There's a knife at my side. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with silver just because it does have a lot of good lines, just not overwhelmed mm. by the entire story. Sure. The silver. And Tom? Yeah, it's Ooh. tough. It's tough. He's, for everyone at home, he's making can't tell if face. <laughs> this is the same face I was making before. <laughs> Very different. I've been making this face pretty much all podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's tough. Partissa gold? Gold. Gold? Gold. Partissa gold. That's Partissa a jump. Gold. <laughs> gold. gold. Firm gold. Firm, Firm gold. gold. All right. And yeah, look, I'm going a gold as well. I'm feeling, yeah, on that gold silver border. Mm. I'm kind of glad someone went silver, yeah, to be yeah. quite honest. Like, this is a classic episode, but it's just, I don't know. It, and especially from season five, there's just some of these episodes which are just relentless and non stop. Mm. And this one isn't. And it's kind of the point. So I don't really want to ding it too much. But yeah, I am. 
(laughs) 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 All right, well, averaging out, this will be a dull gold. This will be the first episode from season five to be called a dull gold, but it'll also be joining other classic era episodes like Whacking Day, which we ranked a dull gold last week, which you didn't exactly you had some problems with danny's reasoning on that one his rank fine i you know you follow your heart the reason for that rank i disagree with yeah (laughs) i had been there there would have been words i'm like i'm coming around to it like i think it's actually a pretty appropriate because whacking day is like an amazing episode of the simpsons Mm -hmm. but like once you start picking at the structure of it it starts falling apart but also be joining uh lisa's rival that's with allison and Mm -hmm. first chair and all that the Simpsons 138th episode Spectacular, which we reviewed in episode 138 appropriately. Mm-hmm. Also, Mountain of Madness, which is an interesting dull goal because I ranked that cubic, you and Danny silvered it. Yep. Bah! I return to that one a lot. wonder <laughs> if I should gold it. I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also recently reviewed Lisa the Skeptic, where they see the angel next to the rakes. Uh <laughs> Episode we reviewed with you, Eddie, Old Money, the grandpa and B and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Well, yeah, that about does it for this episode of The Simpsons Index. But before we get out of here, we just like to recommend some non-Simpsons things to you good folks out there. Books, TV, music, movies, video games, um, architecture, <laughs> coding software. Specialty ping pong tables. Yeah. The latest Brunswick models have got me... <laughs> Pongin. Rocks. <laughs> Lovely Rocks. Matt, Matt finish. <laughs> Go back to our sponsor. <laughs> How about you, VT? What are you into? Well, when I need a good solid rock. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been watching just a whole bunch of Nostalgia Critic on YouTube. Uh, it's just a guy who reviews movies, but mostly, you know, old ones you may not have seen for a while. And it's just a really good way for me to watch bad movies that are, you know, boring bad, not fun bad. Mm. So I like Fan 4 Stick and, you know, stuff like that. But I don't actually want to watch, but I got, you know, get a synopsis of, and so I know why they're terrible. Yeah. So yeah, on Channel Awesome, the Nostalgia Critic. Quite enjoy. How about you, Eddie? What are you into? I'm going to go with art first. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Which is radical. <laughs> because, well, not... No, it's not you that could radical. somehow tie it back to rocks. That would really help. <laughs> Ooh, well, art does rock. Uh, at uh, Tullawong Station mm-hmm. on the Metro Line, there was an art installation there for the past two weeks, which I didn't notice until the last day. It was called the Plant Library. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was basically a collection of local plants from the region set up in a cool library type thing. What they were doing was if you came in and you told them a story about your own plant growing habits, they would give you a plant for free. Hmm. It was yeah. just a really cool installation to raise awareness about native plants nice oh wonderful yeah and also uh i've been watching the david packham show on youtube which is a guy who talks about uh politics in the states yeah he's nice. fascinating just a really good take on everything and talking about trump and the impeachment mm. is hilarious at the moment that's the weirdest thing <laughs> so <laughs> funny yeah later season of america it's uh it's been a doozy <laughs> how about you tom what have you been into uh, I've been really, really big into the Spellmonger series by Terry Mancor. I've been listening to the audiobooks on Audible, and they've been freaking awesome. Super duper, like, classical fantasy, mm-hmm. real sword and sorcery kind of stuff. Like, very literally sword and sorcery. <laughs> All of the sorcerers have swords. Um, <laughs> yeah, and been working on Phoenix Point, which I'm very keen. Comes out in December. Mm-hmm. I'm in a video game. Nice. Australian voices in video games produced by people in Hungary for an American audience. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very down. <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful. And yeah, as for what I've been into, I'm surprised no one else said this at the moment because it is the game that has taken the world by storm. Fucking Untitled Goose Game. Oh uh, my God. <laughs> you, you, there's a button for honking. <laughs> you obviously have not seen my profile photo. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? A uh, goose. I'm oh, wait, it just changed, but it was, yeah, it was a goose. It said, uh, <laughs> you disrespect the honk, you get the bonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. This is. The only problem I have with it, it's just too short. Like, what, what is it? I have no idea. I'm completely yeah. They out didn't of the loop. title it. I don't know what to think. <laughs> you are a goose, and you have like four actions: like walking around. There's a button for honking. Mm-hmm. There's a button for stealing shit, and also a button for like flapping your wings. So is it like Goat Simulator, and you just cause chaos? 
Yeah, but unlike Goat Simulator, you've got actual objectives. Um, mm. And usually, it, yeah, it revolves around stealing people's shit or, yeah, annoying them or trying to manipulate people to get them to go somewhere. Like, So it's a lot of fun. I think it's only like 16 bucks. Like, it's only about a two hour, three hour game at best, but oh, it's, it's just a joy. Like, and it's amazing the popularity of it as well that I was even like hesitant to bring it up today because of how much people have been talking <laughs> it's about it. It's number lately. one on the Switch store, isn't it? Yeah. It's beat Nintendo's latest Zelda game. Like, <laughs> Cause it's got a very distinct art style yeah. as well, which uh, the GOAT game did not. Uh-huh. And yeah, that was like the cheapest looking game <laughs> in history. Goat. Yeah. There is one thing that I know about it, and it makes me proud. Mm-hmm. Australian game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. made by say, House House. I thought you were going to say Australian voice actor. <laughs> <clears throat> Take two. <laughs> 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 but just quickly as well, I just want to mention Jan Hacken Erickson, who's this conceptual artist who's making these videos on Twitter and Instagram Basically about breaking balloons in creative ways. Ah, I've seen those. Is this the one with the knives? He yeah. covers himself in knives and has helmets and things. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just does these, yeah, five to ten second videos of just coming up with creative ways to bust balloons. And it's deeply fascinating. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been surprised how like, much I've just spent just watching, like, because he's got hundreds of these videos now. He is a government-sponsored artist. <laughs> he is. He has grants behind him. Really? That's why he can do what huh. he does, because the government pays him to do it. Wow. Breaking spaghetti and balloons and breaking balloons with spaghetti. So and... satisfying. I know. <laughs> I think that's part of it as well, just watching his little concepts come together, like uh, like the one where he has a bunch of knives in his beanie and he just takes it off and they fall on a balloon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Jan Hack on Ericsson. I think it's Jan Ericsson on Instagram as well. All right. Yeah, that about does it for the Simpsons Index this week. Thank you for, uh, all for listening to us and thank you for joining me in SideQuest Studios. Thank you, Tom. Bye. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. And thank you, BT. Ahoy. And thank you, Elliot. Oh, you're welcome. You, uh, that me, <laughs> your host, <laughs> Elliot J. O'Neill, <laughs> saying to you, that is all the mustard in the house. If anyone wants me, I'll be in my room. Thank you for listening to The Simpsons Index Podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash the Simpsons Index or at Simpsons Index on Twitter or Instagram. Now there's no bonus scenes for this episode, so we'll catch you next week.